Hey guys, it's Tina and I am back and I am here for another car chat video and I am on the way to Brooklyn to visit my mom so I have a little time to speak about some things. So yeah, I'm all, you know what guys, I am being so extra right now like I did the whole makeup bit. I got my outfit on, like where am I going? And I'm literally going to sit in my mom's kitchen and chat. Like, like this is what I'm doing. But anyway, any excuse to get dressed up because it is 54 degrees here in New York, so I am embracing the warmer weather. It's not very warm, but it's warmer, even though it's kind of rainy right now. Like the sun not even out. I'm gonna show you all my extra. Look how I'm off. What am I doing? Wait there. Wait there. I'm gonna take out the glasses, the sunglasses. Like, I was like, I'm gonna have my Ray-Bans on. Like, I'm being extra for no reason. Samir, watch out, watch out now, watch out now, watch out, watch out. Hey! <laughs> Where am I? Where am I going? I am going nowhere. So, you know, sometimes you just wanna be extra, but I'm not big on being extra. I even did this make get ready with me video with this look. And I took the lashes off because I was like, I am not wearing lashes to see my mom. Especially since those lashes are not the most comfortable. I just had to stop to get my little beverage of choice. Some people ask me what it is that I get at Dunkin' Donuts. I get a medium iced caramel latte with half and half and whipped cream. And I am not one to promote the gluttony, so... I really shouldn't be having this because it's a lot of sugar and just way too many calories but it's so delicious I do have to cut it out though because I'm trying to lose some weight I'm trying to lose about 10 to 15 pounds and before anybody says that I don't need to lose weight I appreciate your sentiment but it isn't about losing weight to fit anybody's ideal it isn't about fitting in with what society thinks is you know beautiful it's about me <laughs> losing weight because I don't feel comfortable at this weight it's just too much weight for me to carry around especially coming from a place of being very thin I'm not used to carrying around this much weight and it just feels uncomfortable and I feel like I'm breathing harder and heavier and things are just I'm not as in shape as I need to be so I need to get back into the gym I've put off the gym for the last couple of months and I need to get better at that because I need to just figure out the schedule with school and with work and with everything going on I'm actually in more of a managerial position now at work so there's a lot going on and I don't have as much time and I'm just very tired so anyway that is not here nor there let's go ahead and jump into what this video is all about which is about the Kat Von D and makeup revolution controversy the copyright ripoff just blatant copy of her shade and light eye contour palette so for those of you who don't know Kat Von D made a post on Instagram with her palette up against makeup revolutions palette and her caption pretty much read something like they're riding on her coattails because they outright copied her palette and she is not at all wrong as far as I'm concerned but a lot of people were upset about her posting that and upset at what she said in her caption they were saying that she was unprofessional she didn't need to drag them like that it was unnecessary she shouldn't have done it and to me she was well within her rights she was it was fully justified for her to make that post so I'm gonna put up a little screenshot of her palette versus the Makeup Revolution palette now Makeup Revolution is a relatively new brand in the game as far as popularity it just recently started gaining some traction and is now available online on Ulta.com and in some Ulta stores. In fact, I found it in my local Ulta store and that's how I got introduced to this brand. I've heard about it on different YouTube channels, you know, you, you see them use certain palettes, certain products, but I've never actually seen the brand myself in person, so a few months ago I did find the brand in my local um, Ulta and I purchased a few products, quite a few products from them. Their eyeshadow palettes, their blushes, their lip products, and I've been really enjoying quite a few of those products. In fact, some of them made it to my favorite section, like their matte blushes are so great, they're so smooth, and they're so inexpensive. And that's the draw of the brand. It's very inexpensive. You're talking about $7 for an eyeshadow palette, $5 for a blush, 
five dollars for a lip gloss like their products are generally in the five and seven dollar range and they do have some larger palettes that are fifteen dollars and they're on sale all the time for buy one get one fifty percent off so of course there's a huge draw because they're inexpensive alternatives to higher end brands and for the most part that's great because not everybody has the money to spend on higher end brands and these medium range brands that are available at Sephora and these department stores not everybody wants to spend as much money as some of us do on makeup so of course it's great to have these alternatives and drugstore brands available to us right now the big issue with this brand is that they didn't take inspiration from Kat Von D they didn't just see her shade and light eye contour palette and say oh an all matte neutral palette that is very popular it's selling out it's a hit with consumers let's go ahead and create a cheaper alternative for customers no they went ahead and outright copied her palette from the actual shade selection to the layout of the palette down to the very name of the palette now Kat Von D's palette is the shade and light eye contour palette and I don't know if she's copyrighted that shade and light name probably she hasn't but it's the shade and light eye contour palette and she has the shade and light contour palette which is for your face she has her little contour quads as well so it's a very popular item in her lineup makeup revolutions palette is called the ultra eye contour light and shade palette do we see what they did there they literally interchanged two words swapped them around and now they're the light um, eye shade and contour palette versus the shade and light eye contour palette like it's so obvious it's so blatant that it's an outright copy and ripoff of Kat Von D's palette it they didn't even try to hide it and I would be very insulted if I was Kat Von D as well. I would be very upset and, sh and that's why I think she has every right. And she also followed up her Instagram post with a YouTube video on her YouTube channel where she spoke about why she was upset. And she spoke about what goes into the whole process of creating her palettes and her products and the amount of work that's involved just formulating the products, testing out the products, selecting the shades, making sure they work, finding the correct formula, doing the artwork because she does her artwork but I think most people aren't aware that she's more involved than just the artwork. She does far more. She is behind the whole creative process. She does the layout of the eyeshadows. She puts the quads together. Specifically for the shade and light palette, it's four quads so she has an arrangement of three larger eyeshadows at the top which are your main base shades you'll probably use them the most for blend and transition and such and then she has three contour shades at the bottom that you can use now to shape the eye with add in depth and they're arranged by neutral warm and cool tones so you know exactly what quad to go to of course you can mix and do whatever you want to do with the shades but the thing about creating a palette is yeah you can create beautiful shades all you want but if it's not cohesive and it doesn't make sense and the shades don't go together and don't mesh then like it's a useless palette because nothing really goes together you don't know what eye look to create and a lot of people do need that help to create eye looks so anyway she went into her video you know just talking about how she feels ripped off like makeup revolution didn't go out and take inspiration make their own palette and put the work in that she did instead they just outright copied her and it undermines her creative process it undermines her product and she did mention the price as well that she would love to create products that were just really cheap and really accessible to everyone and she's creating a product at the best price point that she has without sacrifice in quality you know what I mean and I do think most of her products are at a good price point and they are quality products so I get exactly what she's saying I do agree with her completely and the thing about it is dupes and copies of products are nothing new in the makeup industry and, and a lot of people are saying that as well like why she's so upset there are dupes everywhere this was not simply a dupe 
let's be realistic here. It's very hard to be original these days in the makeup industry. It's so saturated. There's so many products out there. There are so many shades out there, so many brands that it's hard to just be original, bring out something innovative that no one else has, right? And matte eyeshadow palettes, it, Kat Von D didn't start matte eyeshadow palettes. There are matte eyeshadow palettes all over the place. Urban Decay has an Ultimate Basics, eyesh um, Naked Ultimate Basics palette that's an all matte palette, but that's all their own. Viseart has their Neutral Mask palette. Beautiful palette, again, that's all their own. Smashbox, Too Faced, all of these palettes, all of these, wait, Too Faced have a matte palette? I think so, yeah, Too Faced have some matte palette. But anyway, all these brands have their own version of a all matte neutral palette. There are some similar shades, but they don't outright copy each other and they put their own creative twist on it, right? Their layout, the packaging, the whole deal is different. It's never a full-on copy of somebody else's product. And that's the takeaway. You're always gonna have crossover products. You're always gonna have products that are similar to others on the market, similar concepts. But the thing is to use your own formulation. Makeup Revolution is of course using their own formulation. But use your own formulation, use your own creativity, use your own layout, use your own packaging. All of that should be individual to each brand. And Makeup Revolution didn't do that. And I completely agree here with Kat Von D. Makeup Revolution has taken it to an, a, another extent though. They're not only copying Kat Von D, they're copying Too Faced. They're copying Urban Decay, Makeup Forever, Bobbi Brown, Kylie Cosmetics, Ben Nye. You think I'm joking? Look at this. The first thing you pull up on Ulta's website when you go to the brand specific page, so you just pull up, you go into um, to Ulta.com and look for the brand Makeup Revolution. The very first thing that pops up is Makeup Revolution ban Luxury Banana Powder. Now, I don't know about you, but that's pretty identical to the Ben Nye Luxury Banana Powder that has been sweeping the market for years. It's, it's cooled down a little bit, but Banana Powder was a bestseller for years. You couldn't even find it. It was sold out everywhere for a while. So Banana Powder, became popularized by Kim Kardashian and her makeup artist Mario Devacquicola. It's a D name, I can't pronounce it, I apologize. But it was a really popular product. Makeup Revolution went ahead and copied it. Not only did they copy the actual product, so a loose banana or light yellow colored powder, they copied the packaging, which is a, it's not even the best packaging, that's the thing. Like they could have done so much better because the banana powder from Ben Nye does not come in the best packaging. It's like a bottle with a little shaky thing. Not the best packaging. But Makeup Re Revolution copied it exactly. Skip ahead. They copied the Makeup Forever Aqua Seal, which is a liquid eye primer that you can use to create liquid liners from your loose pigments, loose eyeshadows, or even a pressed eyeshadow. You can create a liquefied liner product. They have that too. Copy the name. Now this is not as obvious as just the name and the product type that they copied. The packaging is slightly different, but it's still reminiscent of the Makeup Forever version. They also copied the Kylie Cosmetics Lip Kits. And I will be honest with you on this one. I saw a video that mentioned it. I went online at Ulta. They were on sale again, 50% off. I went ahead and picked up the lip kits. Now this was cognitive dissonance on my part because I knew it was an outright copy, right? But it was of Kali Cosmetics, so I didn't feel so bad for Kali Cosmetics, if I'm being honest with you, and I would have been happy to share a duplicate of a product or a, you know, a replica that was much more inexpensive and was easily accessible with better customer service, right? Cognitive dissonance, right? I just, I distanced myself from what I knew was right versus I don't care because it's Kali Cosmetics. But when the Kat Von D fiasco started, I was like, hold up, hold up, this is, this is really not right. I knew it wasn't right. But now it 
really hit home like yo this is not right so they did that with the Kat Von D shade and light palette right they also copied the Bobbi Brown shimmer bricks which are one of Bobbi Brown's most popular products I mean her shimmer bricks everybody knows and loves her shimmer bricks right so they outright copied Bobbi Brown's shimmer bricks where they have five different stripes of the varying colors you can mix them and apply them to the cheeks the really beautiful highlight shades Bobbi Brown has made a killing off of these shimmer bricks and people love the shimmer bricks makeup revolution came along and said ha, we're gonna do the same thing and they named their product vivid vivid shimmer brick blatant copy again same layout the packaging is different because theirs is in a clear compact fine but the brand that they have copied the most the one that they have just outright just decided that they're gonna model their company after or model all their products after is Too Faced Cosmetics which makes sense that Kat Von D is even more outraged because she is friends with the CEO of Too Faced Cosmetics right so they did chocolate I think it's like they they twisted the name the thing is too they copied like Urban Decay and Too Faced and merged the concepts together so they have like a naked chocolate palette or a, a chocolate vice palette so you know the vice palettes those are Urban Decay all the way they have vice one two every year they release a new vice palette they have their naked palettes which were kind of the kickoff to neutral palettes they were not the first one to make neutral palettes let's be clear about that but I think they were the first ones to really popularize the concept and many people jumped on the bandwagon and are making their own neutral palettes so Urban Decay is not the first but I think they're the ones that really brought it to the consumer base and really made it popular so it's signature Urban Decay naked palettes vice palettes the chocolate palettes from Too Faced that's their signature that's one of their best sellers and those palettes are some of my favorites from Too Faced they outright copied the chocolate bar palettes and cleverly mixed in the name with Urban Decay but use the chocolate bar packaging so that metal tin packaging with the raised chocolate little cut like it looks like an actual chocolate bar they actually copied that outright not only that they went ahead and copied their blushing hearts I think it's their sweethearts blushing palettes where it's a heart shaped box like a little heart shaped blush box with three stripes of blush really beautiful products really shimmery I don't really like them because they're too chunky for me like the shimmer particles just no not for me they copied that not only did they copy the blush version they copied the bronzer they did highlights like they outright copied the shape of the box everything the stripes everything from Too Faced it's just ridiculous to me because like I said I have makeup revolution products that I love and I thought they could have been successful on their own merit from their own products from their their own vault their own vault of creativity they could have created their own products and been just fine maybe they weren't really ramped up in popularity yet because you know it takes some time if you don't have like a breakout viral product it takes some time to get popular and really ramp up your profit margin from your products right so I guess this is their cheap and easy way out it's it's very tacky and the thing about it is I don't know how to feel because this is not the first time a company has tried to ride the coattails of another larger company let's not forget some of our brands out here now that are really popular started out riding the coattails of very popular brands Sigma cosmetics Sigma brushes you've heard of Sigma right it's a popular social media famous brand it was made popular on YouTube and the first place I heard about it was makeup by Tiffany D they did collaborations with popular influencers back in the day they brought them all to Paris and did the most right they started out by copying Mac cosmetic brushes yes remember when they outright just said oh 
so MAC has their like their 217 eyeshadow blending brush that's one of the most popular eyeshadow brushes from MAC Sigma went ahead and said it's an SS 217 so you could easily know which brush copies um, the one from MAC right which one matches up they also copied the 239 it's the SS 239 that's how they started their brand claiming to have cheaper alternatives to MAC brushes they were the same design but they were cheaper and you could just get your hands on a whole set for like $80 whatever it was it was just a really cheap brush line when it started out and MAC brushes are very expensive so of course a lot of people were intrigued a lot of influencers a lot of influencers are um, affiliates from Sigma and it's not hard to be an affiliate they just invite you you join you get a, a link to their website and a discount code I am actually a Sigma affiliate <laughs> believe it or not they reached out to me I don't push Sigma I don't talk about it but I do have a, a code to Sigma brushes I don't even think I put the code in my description box but I am on their affiliate program but a lot of influencers support Sigma and that's how they started by copying MAC cosmetics and copying them outright like copying the design of the brush the shape of the brush the bristles of the brush and even the number system of the brush really tacky and I didn't like that they did that but you were like eh, let's go ahead with it another online startup brand makeup geek let's not forget how makeup geek started makeup geek started out with her online store by selling samples of mac pigments now back in the day mac pigments were like a big thing they were in the large jars and you couldn't go through that so a lot of people would buy the large mac pigments and sell quarter teaspoons of them in little sample size jars because you didn't need that much right and you could really make a profit off of these little mac jars marlena from makeup geek used to sell these quarter tea teaspoons of pigment on her website let me give you some history but in case you don't know how the brand started that's how she started she was selling loose pigments just like lime crime lime crime was selling loose pigments that's how a lot of these brands started back in the day elevated she said hey wait a minute I can really start my own company make my own my own cosmetics and you know I already have an audience let's go for it so she started making eyeshadows guess who she decided to copy with her eyeshadows you guessed it Mac cosmetics so when a lot of people want to give Mac hate and talk about Mac this and Mac that Mac cosmetics was the pioneer okay Mac cosmetics started a lot of these other brands because they wanted to emulate what Mac did because Mac was so big so popular with makeup artists and consumers they were the first major consumer cosmetics company I mean they had their own freestanding stores they weren't just available in like Macy's and, and Bloomingdale's and they weren't just a counter they had their own stores like Mac started it all for us and makeup geek rode on their coattails because when she started with her eyeshadows like she literally had swatch comparisons of her eyeshadows because she used their shade range to create her own shade range she duplicated the, the, the shades that she personally loved from MAC and the ones that were really popular she duplicated them slapped on a different name but then she would have the comparison swatches to say hey expensive pink from MAC which she loves she's gonna name that now cosmopolitan I believe it's cosmopolitan that's the copy then she would copy um what is it like brown down those popular shades uh, what is it um carbon right blanc type gesso she has a matte white like that's how she created her brand that's how she started her brand no one jumped on her when she was doing that right and that's why I am torn on one hand I think it's outright wrong for a brand to copy another brand's product not even attempt to cover it up or attempt to put their own twist on it just outright copy it down to the friggin name and the shades but I have purchased from brands that have done that that started out on that 
You know what I mean? Makeup Geek, I have tons of products from Makeup Geek and I didn't just forfeit buying from her brand. I didn't boycott her brand because she started on the coattails of MAC Cosmetics. I didn't abandon Sigma Cosmetics either because they copied the MAC brushes. So, uh, you know what I mean? It's If I'm gonna really put a foot down and say, oh, it's wrong what Makeup Revolution is doing, I'm not gonna support Makeup Revolution, then I shouldn't be supporting Makeup Geek or Sigma Cosmetics or any other brand that even thinks about copying another brand, right? But I'm just, I am, I am not in a place where I'm just running around being bitter about everything and trying to find an issue in everything and boycotting every single thing that I see. I should just boycott this whole traffic right here right now, right? Like I can't, I can't run around just looking for the next thing to happen and the next brand to, to boy. I, I can't, I can't. I don't have the energy for it. And I really do like some of the Makeup Revolution products. I do, I can't even pretend I don't. And I won't purchase the copies. You know what, allow me to tell you, I'm a copy of my buy the Kali Cosmetic Lip Kit. And I'm interested in the shimmer bricks. I'm not gonna lie, I am so interested in the shimmer bricks. Does that make me a hypocrite? What do you guys think? I don't think it makes me a hypocrite because like I said, I have Makeup Geek products and Sigma and guess who they copied? MAC Cosmetics. But do we hate co MAC Cosmetics so much or we think they're so big that we can overlook that? Because if, we if we're gonna call a spade a spade, let's go ahead and boycott all the other brands, right? Right? Am I being, I, am, I, am I reaching with this? Because I don't think I am. I feel like if we're gonna do it, let's do it. And, but I'm not there. I am not there. I don't feel that strongly about it. But I do know that I won't rush out to buy the dupes, even though I'm a bit curious. But not gonna lie to you, I'm a curious. I might, I might try them out. Oh my God, I'm so bad. What do you guys think? I want to know what you guys think because dupes are nothing new copies are nothing new and the thing about a dupe is dupes all started on the concept of finding an alternative product from another brand that is a similar formula similar shade that pretty much replicates a very popular product and it didn't necessarily mean that the product had to be less expensive it could just be from another brand like if you love MAC cosmetics but you wanted a full-on cruelty-free brand so you look for duplicates in Urban Decay Urban Decay is a little bit pricier but they're cruelty free and they're vegan products so maybe that's what you were looking for a dupe color in another brand that's vegan or cruelty free something that aligns with your um, views you know your your standpoint and then with YouTube and social media, dupes kind of transformed into finding a cheaper product that was the same shade, similar formula. It's not gonna be the same formula, but it's a similar formula. So it, 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 it transformed into that, trying to find cheaper alternatives. So say for instance, you found a Kat Von D product, Too Faced product, Urban Decay product, but you you wanted a cheaper alternative and you found one from ColourPop, Color Rain, Makeup Geek, from the drugstore. That's what it evolved into. But I don't know, like, what do you guys think? How do you guys feel? Because right now, I'm like, I could be on either side. That's how wishy-washy I am on this because honestly, I'm not giving up the blushes from Makeup for Revolution that I love. I love their blushes and I do want to try out their shimmer bricks because I feel like they're gonna be beautiful and they're very cheap. And I don't use highlighter enough to justify the high price point sometimes. So, you see I'm a stay, I'm a mix up and I wanna, wanna tink, wanna tink. Let me know I wanna tink, I wanna feel about the tink. And yeah, <laughs> leave comments below. I'd love to hear what your thoughts are and we'll have a discussion. All right guys, I'll talk to you soon. Bye. And that's the thing, I don't want anyone to put me on this activist pedestal and assign me as their personal social media, cosmetics, world issues activist. 
I don't want that role. I don't want that position. I don't want that pressure. So please don't do that. Someone on my St. Patrick's Day makeup tutorial, which is literally a green eyeshadow makeup tutorial. I was inspired by a makeup geek pigment that I got that was a bright, vivid green. And I'm like, this is a perfect, perfect eyeshadow. And I'm like, oh crap, Mardi Gras and St. Patrick's Day is coming up. Let me go ahead and just name it the St. Patrick. No, somebody in other comments, like I said to me, said, oh, she is very sad that a black woman is celebrating St. Patrick's Day. And I'm like, yo, really? Oh, my must go look up something about the pygmies and something and see if I still want to celebrate it. And I'm like, listen, listen. And I was very straightforward in my comment. I was not rude. I was like, listen, please don't assign me as an activist, okay? That I need to stand up for the things you believe in. I didn't ask for that. I don't know you like that. Please fall back, right? And she gonna tell me, say, oh, oh, she can't. She do, she finds it hilarious that I don't support Jeffree Star Cosmetics and Z Palette, but I support St. Patrick's Day. Like, uh, listen, you need to call up NASA because with your reach, we could have gotten to Mars a long time ago because. You, how far up your ass did you reach for that? How? How do these things align, match up? Like one of these things is not like the other. My girl, you are gonna tell me, said Jeffree Star, who is an outright nasty ass person, to his customers and his whole persona, I don't appreciate, so I don't support him. And Z Palette, who went on a social media attack against people who didn't agree with the price of their newest product, you're gonna align that with St. Patrick's Day? Like, what? Like, are you serious? Like, this is, what? What are you doing, sweetie? What, what's going on? What, what's going on in your life? What, what's wrong? What's wrong? Cause my whole thing is, it's not all or nothing for me. I don't have to be upset and outraged about every freaking thing. And I said to her, I'm like, oh, so you don't celebrate St. Patrick's Day. So then you don't celebrate Christmas. Halloween, Thanksgiving, Valentine's Day, this year day, yeah, the next day, you can't celebrate none of that. Independence Day, no, you can't celebrate none of that because what about the history behind it? Are you thinking about that? Or is it just St. Patrick's Day about you? What, like, and she's like, oh, well, I'm informed about the things that I celebrate, so, oh, okay, okay, oh, you wanna, you, do you wanna high five? Do you want a round of applause? Good for you. Come out of my comments with your fucker then. Come out of it. Don't make me rude to you, my girl. Like, what? And I wasn't even rude. I was ready to, I was like, you know what? Jesus bless me another day because I'm off course after my ear. Don't come to me with your foolishness. It's foolishness. I am not your personally assigned activist. Like anything you're outraged about, I should be outraged about and I should be bitter about, no. Your opinion does not equal my opinion. Just because you watch me on YouTube, me and you are not a friend, me and you are not a family, me and you are not there, me not breathing in your face when night come. So your views don't have to automatically become my views. And even if me not breathing in your face when night come, if my husband have a different view from me, him can't force me to feel how him feel about some car. If I don't think about it like that and I don't want to hurt up my head and carry around that the burden of bitterness, I am not going to carry it around. So try your best, don't come and burn yourself by me, my girl. Stop it! Stop it! Okay, rant over. I just needed to vent about that just real quick.